for the first thing uh, is that you can actually use the DRTK2 to do static observations of coins. So you can actually use it standalone like this without the remote and you can record all your data. All you need to do is set it on the point that you want. Turn it on. Make sure it's in mode 5. Okay. Now first you're going to see the LED red. So that's starting up. And then just make sure it's in mode 5. Now once it's in mode 5, uh, it's going to reboot once. Okay, so the first thing to make sure that it's in mode 5 and running, you'll see the right LED blinking 5 times, and the left LED will be green, meaning it's broadcasting. Now when the middle LED uh, is red, means it's just powering up, alright? It will then turn sort of a yellow or light green. That means it's acquiring fix. And once it's in dark green, means it has acquired fix. And it will start recording data. For the reference, today is the 22nd of June. So you can see it's uh, light green now. Or yellow. Alright, so it's dark green now and it's uh, 4 01 pm. So it's when doing data recording, the data recorder rolls over every hour. So let's say if you start recording at 4 15 pm, it's going to create a file at 4 15, and once it reaches 5 pm, it will close the previous file and open a new file at 5 pm. And then if you keep on recording, it will close the 5 p.m. file and then open one at 6 p.m. I to have at least uh, 15 minutes worth of data. Um, that seems to give a good balance between duration and quality of a uh, GPS fix. Okay, so it's roughly about 15 minutes already. Uh, so you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just turn it off and it will stop recording by itself. So uh, we'll just go back in the office and then check the data out. Okay, so uh, we collected the data. Um, so we're going to download it from this tech. What we're going to do is, now uh, beneath here, you'll have a cover, a rubber cover that says USB. Okay, if, you need, if you open it up, it's a bit tight, I don't know what weatherproofing. Once you have it open, inside is a USB female socket. So all you're going to do is just take a Type-C cable, stick it in, right, and turn it on. Okay, so now that we are back in the office, um, so first thing is we want to get the data out from the uh, the RTK tool, so we've powered it on and um, we've connected the USB cable. All right, now once you connect the cable to the PC, it should disappear. So I've copied out the data from the DRTK2 drive and I put them in separate folders for each point. So let's take a look a bit about the file format. So first thing you see RTK293, that is the, uh, just a count, a rolling count. Then followed by the year, the data was captured. The month, 06, 22 for the day. And the time, 080113. So 0801 is the hour and minute, seconds. Now this time is GPS time, so uh, in Malaysia here it's plus 8, you get 16.01, which is 4.01, which was the time record earlier. Right. The same is here, you can see the time here, 08.20, so this is captured roughly 20 minutes later. I've taken uh, another piece of data, this one is from the RTB inside a DRTK flight mission right? just to show you that you can do the same as well so the first tool you'll have to use is RTK convert 
basically you just want to convert from RTCM3 to the Renex format. So just click here, we load the file, point 0.1, right? and then we just convert. So time, we can set it to GPS time is 0 0.8, 0 0.1. Okay, it's converted. Uh, same with the point 0.2. If we convert, this should be 0 0.8. Two zero convert um, and let's take point three as well. So this is uh, tenth of June at sixteen twenty three. So let's open this convert tenth of June. 1623 so minus 8 it's uh, 16 local time 23 okay so you can see their observations here and there and you can see the observation file each one you will get a observation file and a navigation file except for the one that you extract from the uh, flight mission then you can use uh, up to you your choice of whether uh, it's RTK post, which in this case I've already gotten the uh, data from our course network. Uh, let's take point one, let's load the observation file, and then you can then execute. Okay, so as you can see, we can plot out the exact points. Okay, and get a coordinate of where the points are. Right. And you can see the uh, actual point-by-point uh, -point processing with the standard deviation. Okay. So with this data, you can um, basically PPK every position that the stick was placed at. And the longer you place it there, you will get a larger average a better data, larger piece of data through averaging. Okay. Let's close this. Another tool that you can use is uh, Amblit Studio. So in the case of the rover, let's take point two. Uh, base, we take the Renex data from the course network and navigation file and then we process it you get exactly the same kind of output okay then you can get your averaging and get the position of wherever this is if you show the results file you get exactly the same um, position file let's open that okay so it's exactly the same So just to prove to you how precise this tool can get, um, I've actually placed it on a static point for slightly more than an hour. So you can see you have one file here which is just before 3 o'clock, one that is at 3 o'clock and one that's at 4 o'clock. So I did the processing as per the previous ones. Now first of all, you can see here that uh, in this window, it says here there are 3,599, which is about 6, 3,600 points, which is how many you would get if you had uh, one observation per second for an hour. And as you can see, they all fall very tightly within a small 2 to 3 centimeter error radius. So this shows that it's all, it's actually quite usable as a static point observation tool. Uh, you can use it, uh, it's pretty simple, there's not much settings to take. Uh, the only thing is uh, during crunching and the output, whether you want it in uh, whatever date for, data format you want, and whether the geoid is available for your location.
So, tip number two. Now, this thing can actually be powered by something other than WB37. Okay? Um, you can use various power source. Uh, there are two types of cables. One allows you to fit power from batteries. Right? So, for now, I'm using an Argus battery. Uh, that's a cable that came with it. The other one is actually an AC power adapter. So, for example, you can see there's no battery in here. I've connected this battery to this cable. And all you need to do is to connect this cable to the port beneath here. Right? Once this is in, you can then turn it on. See? So you can actually use this for very long-term static observations. Uh, you'll need at least a 4S, it'll take anywhere from 4S to 12S batteries. For the next tip, we're going to turn this into a GNSS RTK rover which we will then measure relative to the course network. All right? So the first thing is we've got to turn this on and then we're going to have to set it into mode 3. So to set it into mode 3, what you do is press and hold till this green L and the M button till the green LED turns yellow Right, it's yellow. Press until it blinks only three times. Now once it's blinking three times, you just let it go. It will then reset the machine to boot up in mode three. Okay, so now this is in mode three. All right, we're gonna link it. So to link it to mode three, what you do is you hit this button menu here. Go down to the aircraft. Choose handheld stick. Then press linking. Handheld stick walk with network RTK. So this one means you're going to work with the course network. And this one, walk with mobile station. This one means you're going to have a second DRTK2 placed on a known point. So you're going to press OK. All right. Then basically it's going to tell you you're going to need a strong connection. Press OK. And there will be step-by-step -step instructions. So, right. So once it starts beeping, you'll need to go here and press the link button. All right. So once it's linked, you're going to have to set it to your network. All right. So you just have to set up your uh, course network parameters. For our case, we're going to blur this out. Just tap connect. Okay, done. And then close. Now, if you go to plan here, and say walk with RTK you'll see it's trying to get a connection so if we tap in the you can see it's trying to connect to the course network okay so we finally got RTK fixed um, you can see it says fix here. Uh, this is the accuracy, uh, the RMS accuracy in all three directions. This is for each individual direction. Okay, so if you want to start recording points, tap here, set point. So you have two options. One is to just measure the value at the moment where you tap. The other one, it will read five values and do an averaging. So let's just say we want to do some averaging. So. Every point that we want to record, we just tap here or the C2 button behind, which would be this one. 
That means the one with your right hand. So if we tap C2, so if we tap C2, it will then ask us to set, so we can call it point one, TBM one, station one, whatever we want to call it. So that's what the point prefix means. Device altitude is the antenna face center to the tip of the bottom distance, which by default is 1.8011 meters. So unless you've actually changed the mounting method, uh, you most probably will not change this. Label is where you insert the values for, let's say if you want to give this place a name. So if you want to call this the roadside nail or uh, station one or something like that, you can put a remark here. If you're happy, press save. And then you can carry on for every other point. So you just keep on tapping C2 until you're done. Once you're done, tap save. You want to give this basically, a, this will be the name of your project. So you just tap here. Let's call this uh, demo. Done. All right. And then we save. So this will be our entire job. Once we're done, we exit this way and we can export this data into the SD card which we will place inside the remote by tapping here. Go to the bottom where the SD card logo is, export DRTK task, tap on demo, export. So it will export a CSV file in this directory. You can then import this data accordingly into your software.